Welcome to the Peerless YouTube. I am Katie North and today is class three of our scale mini series and we're going to be doing a little bit of what we learned from both of them. Uh, kind of getting the round shape and the individual scales but this time we're going to make it a little bit more pretty and we're going to make a mermaid. So I hope you enjoy it. I absolutely love mermaids and I've painted many 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 mermaids. So yeah I hope you like it and yeah let's get started. For your supplies, you will need Peerless watercolor, watercolor brush and paper, artist pen, pencil, double-sided tape, scissors, extra fine detailed brush, gel pen, and Peerless metallic goat sheets. Jumping right in, once you have your palette made, we are going to start off with the fishnet pattern. So it's the same exact thing that I've done on the bottom of this mermaid, but this time I'm going to erase a little bit just so I know where all of the placement is, but then I'm going to make the scalloped edge scale. So that's kind of more of like that classic um, either mermaid scale or fish scale and a little bit different than our viper because those viper actually stayed very sharp and pointed. Um, more like a dragon scale. So once you put all of your scales on your mermaid, if you would like a softer effect, you can take your eraser and erase some of those marks so it's not as intense. But I'm going for, you know, I want to know exactly where each scale is, so I didn't take too much off. And then the thing I love most about this mermaid tail is that the, the reflecting and like the iridescent kind of shimmer of the scales and we're using the peerless gold sheets today and so when you're laying down the first wash you want to make sure that you have enough yellow in the areas that when you start adding your blues and greens and your darker tones you know that some of those are going to stay bright and vibrant yellow so once you have that on there um, we are going into the hair and then one of my other favorite styles is Art Nouveau and so one of their things that they do in the hair is that you don't see individual strands unless it's away from the giant kind of grouping of hair and then the inside color there's a few different ways they do it but this is like one of the ones that i've noticed the most that i absolutely love i think it's so pretty um and you're going to do all wet on wet so instead of trying to paint individual hairs you're basically going to act it like it's like a like a coloring book and you're going to fill in the entire section and then if you would like a darker area like maybe underneath like underneath her like collarbone or where the shadow would be you just add a little bit more paint where the um still wet on wet but like a little bit more of a uh, saturated amount of the color and we're using the what is that the amber yellow so when it gets the amber yellow is really cool too because instead of getting orange more orange when you put another layer it gets kind of that golden tone which is perfect for that kind of art nouveau style of hair so uh and then this video is we're going a little bit faster um if you need to pause at any moment and kind of catch up but I feel like this video I can explain it pretty simply and there's not that much more steps to what we what we've done in, in the first couple of videos um, so I'm just kind of doing like a run through and putting it together what we've learned and in my personal style this is like definitely a kind of mermaid that I would paint on my own and paint in one of my kind of um the art nouveau collages of all of like the detailed crazy things that i love doing so it was really fun for me to paint this with you guys so anyway the next step uh once you have your first washes of the amber yellow is that we are going to do um we're trying to get some skin tone yeah so I'm mixing skin tone and I want it to be kind of like a muted peachy kind of color so I am going back and forth between my blue a little bit of the mahogany green and the, the, the uh, not mahogany green mahogany brown and the right peach and I am just trying to play with all of those different colors this first layer for the skin tone is going to be uh, very translucent and it's just to get the base down there so I want that that base to kind of be like between an olive green and a peach <laughs> if those two colors make sense in your brain of like trying to like get a very translucent layer of that those are my <laughs> those are the colors that I like to mix together and I kind of want to give her that like undertones because she's underwater so I want those green undertones with there but I wanted there to be enough peach in there that it still looks like a softer skin tone so if that makes sense but you can see I keep kind of going back and forth and adding all of the different the colors 
and yeah so now working back to the mermaid tail so all of the scales that are going to be either teal blue or dark blue or in the indigo um you're gonna lay that first wash down so i mixed that peachy color with the green and i know if i mix a little bit of that sky blue with there i get that really really beautiful aqua color so i'm working with that a lot and this is going to be the the laying down color of this so i know where all of those blue tones are going to go Sorry for the camera placement, but I'm doing just the first wash on the um, the fin of her mermaid tail as well. And now I want to make a darker tone of my aqua kind of color with the sky blue, and then I'm adding the indigo. So the indigo is very deep and rich and has a lot of color, so you don't need too much of it, but it will definitely make that tone but a darker shade of it. Um, and so I'm kind of mixing that between that and then I think with that yellow that's kind of left over on the top to give it a green and I'm just getting a little bit more of the darker colors in the green blend between the yellow and the blue. One thing that you want to look out for is don't bring that blue or that green too far into your yellow scales yet because you still want those to be bright and vibrant. Um, but yeah, next we are going to be laying down our warm washes for the skin tone. And I like to do these ones in the cheeks and kind of in the shadows because I want some of the shadows to kind of pop and still have that warm, either a pink or a peach tone. Uh, we will add some more blue and green shadows just for the underwater kind of, you know, cooler too. But the skin tone looks really nice with a little bit more of that peachy cone. She's gonna get more of a peachy, peachy tone, still with some of those kind of golden and green undertones. You will be able to see all of those tones at the end, especially when you look at it from different angles or you know, what parts are reflected with light. Um, that's why I like having so many different layers of, of uh, washes for the skin tone. All right, so now we have our basic kind of outline and some depth to our mermaid tail is now the tedious process of doing every individual scale. And it still is one of my favorite. There are beautiful mermaid tails where they are all softer and you can't see individual scales, but I just have a thing about individual scales and where you can see them and you can see which ones are green and you see which ones are blue and you can tell that that one is green, but it's in shadow, so it's a darker color. Like, I love it. I love the detail. I love the amount of time that it takes to kind of build them so they're they're multi-layered in their color, that they, they kind of shift colors when you look at it. It's one of my favorite things about watercolor. So, and then now, as, you're see, as you can see, this same green that I've mixed, you can put over blue and you can put it over yellow, and you get two different colors because it's, it's a, another wash and another layer, and it's, and it's showing through the translucent kind of, you know, what the color underneath is. So you get so many different colors of scales and I think it makes a nice effect and lots of colors. And especially when we add the gold, it totally makes it just like iridescent and so pretty. So um, for the fin, the little backside fin, you want to kind of add the, the translucent layer, but then do another layer of a blue kind of where, right where it goes past kind of her hip area. And then that way you kind of get the idea that the fin itself is transparent and you can see through it a little bit and see, you know, still the curve of her, um, her hip. Alrighty, so now we are going to mix the in shadow skin tone. So I think I used a little bit of the right peach, a little bit of the pink, uh, mahogany brown, and then the indigo. So that all is kind of what I'm going to be using as that muted skin tone for in shadow. And I'm kind of just making it up as I go for this one. I have like a kind of a sketchy reference photo. Um, I definitely, I feel like I need to do a little bit more 
drawing exercises because it's been it's been a while since I've been doing um, my own sketches which is it's kind of crazy I've just been painting all the time with you guys so but yeah just kind of you know getting used to putting those shadows in um, and yeah you can mix it you can mix it a little bit more you can have some areas that are still a little bit more pink and then if they're in a deeper shadow you can add a little bit more blue or a little bit more green whatever your personal preference is and yeah So I'm giving the skin tone a break for a minute. I will come right back to it uh, and just kind of adding a few more details and a few individual scales. Um, as you know, when you try to do too many things right next together, they tend to pool together and make a giant puddle of paint. So if you're doing individual scales, you're going to want to do an area and then you might have a bunch of them, but you can't do the ones next to it yet. So you're going to have to let it dry and then come back to it. So it's always a kind of a... A process of making that circular motion around your painting to work on one area while the other part is drying and you know it's just one of those things with watercolors that you got to get used to and just working in I like to do a circular motion but it doesn't always end up like that but you know and then once that air layer is dry you can add the next one to get those nice crisp sharp lines again so then we're going right back to the skin and getting even more depth and dark and i'm using more i have a mahogany brown this time in shadow and yeah i mean this is it's, it's it is what it is with watercolors it's so cool because every layer that you add is just adding this like layer of depth and like a layer of skin almost to this and you can just see the other colors popping through but you're gonna be able to add. i think it's so cool i think skin tone is just crazy it's crazy it's crazy with watercolor and i mean right now it looks a little scary i'm like oh what am i doing but then like once i dilute it and get the softer edges and where all of the darker places are supposed to go like it just makes her body form and have the roundness and the plumpness and the just you know the curves and everything just make a little bit more sense so it's just just playing with it um, I, I kind of have a feeling I might have used the wrong side of my watercolor paper on this painting, which is very silly, but my, um, my paper didn't seem like it was absorbing my paint as well as it usually does. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes you use the wrong side. And I mean, even if you want to do like a test, you know, to see how it absorbs on one side and then how it absorbs on the back side, there's definitely a front and a back to watercolor paper it's pretty tricky because you know obviously it's white and so if you're not like super focused on the like individual fluffs of you know cotton or whatever kind of paper you're using it's very easy to use the wrong side of watercolor paper and let me tell you it kind of messes up stuff so there are some areas that like i felt like around her cheek and um especially her neck and i only did probably five washes and i've let them dry in between but for some reason the like the fibers of the paper weren't holding the um the paint the way they usually do and they were kind of like spraying out a little bit as soon as i would put a layer of wash down so made me think that i might have done the wrong side of the paper 
um, in the end, it kind of works out. I use a, a more of an outline um, to fix it to make it look like a more um, like actual Art Nouveau. And the Art Nouveau has like their their line work is very distinctive. So they have a lot of um, individual small pointed lines um, for the inner details, and then there's usually like a thicker outline like encasing the entire like main focus of the drawing. Um, hey guys, if you've never looked into Art Nouveau, it is my absolute personal favorite style of art. And I mean, it also just looks incredible with watercolors too. So we will be doing an Art Nouveau class, tutorial, series, or whatever we're going to do. I haven't figured it out yet because it is my favorite tutorial or my favorite like medium, not medium. Uh, oh my goodness, the word I am looking for. It's just, it's my favorite style of painting and watercolors are absolutely stunning with it. So I haven't decided how I want to present it yet to you guys, but it is gorgeous. Um, yeah, but just going around, adding all of your detailed layers and getting a little bit more shadows in the tail and the skin and in the arm, arm scales. Uh, yeah, I will check back with you in a minute. Okay, so now we are going to be doing the kind of algae covered rock that she's sitting on. Uh, a lot of green. Uh, probably would have been smarter to use a bigger watercolor brush, but you know, I'm still so stuck on these tiny reservoir brushes. And for some reason, I just always, you know, that's what I do. I just use the small brush for everything, but you don't have to. It would probably be a lot faster and you can kind of smooth the areas a lot easier with a bigger brush. Um, but yeah, I just did kind of what I'm, what I'm calling is an algae covered rock where she's just hanging out under the ocean. And now we are adding blue and green uh, skin tones, which I feel like give it that actual underwater feel. Usually if I was doing a skin tone, I wouldn't put as heavy of a blue, but obviously she's a mermaid. So you could get away with a lot of blue in her skin for sure. Um, I think it looks great, especially with the, the contrast between the peach and the kind of tanner tones and then the olive undertone and the blue. I think it turns out really pretty. Um, I make the details in her face very subtle and softer. Um, I do go back with a black artist pen to outline the eyes and just like that, like upper lip, I kind of make a little bit more of a pout and fuller. Um, but again, that's, I feel like it's a little bit more of that Art Nouveau style too, that I was trying to accomplish, but yeah. So now, um, I am going to make a giant puddle of paint, um, Right now, it's just for the millions of outlining of the scales. So you could outline them in black um, with an artist pen, but you could also use a extra fine detailed pen and outline all of the scales as well if you would like them to kind of pop out and just, you know, be more visible. Uh, or if you like that softer look of having it be just the watercolor and, you know, the difference of scales and the colors next to it. I definitely like the outline. Um, and then I think after this, I think I used the same. Yeah, I used the same to outline um, the fin. And then I feel I think I outlined kind of like under her breast area and kind of like where of her kind of like little stomach folds when she's bending over and like that kind of area because I want it to be like a like an actual line, but I don't want it to be black with a black artist pen. So I am using this dark uh, indigo, yep, yeah, right here. So as I would an outline, but I wanted it to be a more subtle and softer, so I'm actually using watercolor, so. 
and then yeah all right her line her breast that kind of area and her stomach area um and then moving up like kind of under her chin and her cheekbone so now i'm going to be mixing a giant puddle of this color so this you want to make sure you have plenty of because you don't want too many different you don't have to remix it if you're mixing if you're just using an autumn's indigo that's fine if you have to remix it that's super easy but if you're mixing multiple colors in there um having a, a big puddle of it is going to be the easiest way to go and then i am using a very small detailed brush to every painstakingly outline and fill in every little area around her hair and then i will be using a much bigger brush but still not huge to do the entire background this color too so again it takes some time and it's kind of just you know also why i didn't do this video normal speed because you'll be watching me paint for like 30 minutes right now <laughs> maybe not 30 but like 15 minutes for sure so now it's just sped up into a couple minutes um but yeah i feel like the aqua not the aqua the autumn's indigo is like the perfect contrast with this um what is it the amber yellow yeah amber yellow i think it's so pretty and especially with art nouveau they have a lot of jewel tone colors so I, even if i made her hair maybe a little bit more of a muted a muted gold color i feel like would be really pretty but it really is like the muted tones that they use um are just so pretty they're just so pretty so that's why i was kind of getting more of that indigo color versus kind of like a bright aqua or super true blue kind of color um and autumn's indigo is like absolutely it's still one of my absolute color favorites and so this side i want to be the obvious light source so i'm using the same color but i'm adding more water to it just to give that little little bit of idea that the light is coming from that side but yeah all right so now i have actually let the the entire painting dry 100 percent and i am going back with my artist pen again this is going to take a while i did not feel like i needed to show you every single second of this um but yeah generally i'm using a small uh artist pen to get all of the inside details and then the outside majority that's not majority but the outside outlining gets a thicker artist pen so uh but yeah just as much or little as you like of the pen i feel like it kind of gives it more of that illustrated a look and again the art nouveau style that i'm going for <laughs> So you can see here now too, like all of those little outlines on the inside and I have a much thicker watercolor, not watercolor, but a much thicker artist pen now that I'm going around the very edge and it's about three times the size uh, black line as the inside ones. So for like the facial features and the lips and like kind of like the fingers, all of those get a smaller one and then about three times as big the just outline and yeah it's starting to come along next up we are going to do our white highlights um, and I only do a few white highlights on her because the majority of the highlights I do are going to be with the gold sheet
Okay, my favorite part, if you guys haven't tried these gold sheets, they are absolutely stunning. They shine insanely bright in the sun, and once they dry, they're like the perfect gold shimmer. Uh, you can dilute them and have them be transparent, and, and just for like an actual glitter look, or you can leave it pretty saturated on your brush and not with a ton of water, and then you'll get like and then like a very hard glitter line that like doesn't I mean even if you do it over black it wouldn't show through the black underneath there's like that much glitter there and it dries perfectly flat on the page just like watercolor so there's no lifting you know different sizes um some of the some of the scales I'm just outlining and doing the little half moon shapes and then the scales that I've left yellow that I want to be very bright I'm going to give like a whole scale the gold and then I actually outlined very detailed, like very small lines, um, her her arms and her fingers and especially like her cheeks. But one of my favorites for, you know, it's part of the scale study, it's another scale, is doing individual scales on her skin with the gold. So they kind of, it's just like a little swoop, but barely just like letting your, your paintbrush touch the skin. And it gives that kind of like almost little triangle diamond shape and especially with those colors and the blues and the, 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 you know, the peach and the greens and the undertones of the skin with that little pop of kind of iridescent, like there's scales that are super soft on her skin. Looks so pretty. I love it so much. So, uh, yeah, so we're getting pretty close to the end. If there's any like little details that you need to fix in the hair, because I know getting those hair, you know, the, the yellow and the blue right next to each other. You can always kind of fix some of those mistakes with the gold or the white highlight and you can kind of reestablish those lines and make them kind of, you know, the right shape and, and you know, if the blue came into them, that is a good way to fix it. Um, I'm putting a little bit of the gold through the hair and kind of do some swooshes and individual hair strands kind of where in that, like, that bigger section is that's all, you know, one wet on wet wash. Um, and when it just shines in, in the sun, it looks so pretty. So yeah, this is, this is about it. This is the completed final, um, mermaid, uh, scale study. So this one's more of an iridescent using multiple color scales and yeah, shiny gold on top. I hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to see your paintings. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends and we will see you next time.